Historically, we used to, uh, you know, avoid alkylating agents like melphalan for patients who were eligible for transplant because of concern over, you know, difficulty mobilizing stem cells. Uh, I think, uh, you know, nowadays when you consider the elderly patients, uh, you know, whose therapy used to be melphalan based, now there is considerable evidence that, you know, melphalan is not a required treatment uh, for the elderly and frail patient either. Uh, but actually the most important determinant of outcome in patients who are elderly and frail turns out to be, you know, the patient's fitness or their frailty indicators. And for those patients who are considered to be frail, perhaps a doublet such as lenalidomide dex uh, that's dose adjusted uh, or, you know, a gentle, you know, sub-Q weekly bortezomib dex approach could be very, you know, reasonable. For a patient who is, you know, maybe of intermediate fitness, a triplet I think could be very reasonable such as, you know, bortezomib lenalidomide dex. On the other hand, for, for the young and fit patients, um, typically the standard of care now, nowadays would be you know, a VRD approach such as bortezomib, lenalidomide, dex. I'll, I'll review some of the data and I'll also review some of the emerging trials that are you know, coming up and challenging that, uh, that data you know, for the future, looking at, say, KRD combination of carfilzomib, lenalidomide combination, incorporation of monoclonal antibody into upfront treatment. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's an exciting time definitely for myeloma patient and uh, we have uh, more effective therapies and less toxic therapies too.